Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Exploring the Arts Around Us. I'm Monica Merrill, a Peters Township resident and lover of art in all its forms. This series is designed to showcase and promote some of the organizations in our area that create and celebrate art in all its various forms. In these programs, I share insights about the organizations and different forms of art that are available, and perhaps you will be inspired to investigate the possibilities. Today's program is going to be about the McMurray Art League, a well-established group of artists who create masterpieces using a wide variety of mediums. My guests are Ann Trimble, President, and Jan Penny, Treasurer of the McMurray Art League. Ann and Jan, welcome and thank you for joining me to share information about the McMurray Art League. Um, let's start with you, Ann. Can you tell us a little bit about the history of the McMurray Art League and um, the purpose? The McMurray Art League was um, formally established in 1977 by a group of, of um, artists that decided they wanted to, um, I'll read the uh, mission statement, to foster, expand, and perpetuate an interest in the creative arts, thereby promoting mutual stimulation of the arts within the league and the community. So, nice, nice. Yeah. Were you one of the founding members? No, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I was not. I've only been a member about 12 years now. 12 so. years, and you're the current president of the organization. Mm -hmm. So the, goals, the goal is to bring together a group of artists to help encourage each other to create mm -hmm. and promote the organization. And 77 years, that's what, 20 years almost? No, oh, not no. quite. <laughs> Lower than, what am I saying? Uh, my math is bad. <laughs> and my math's bad. 40 years, 45 years. Yeah. Okay, that's a big. It's bus. actually, actually, I think <coughs> the incorporation was in 77, but we, we just celebrated our 50, 50th anniversary. A oh, did you really? Back, Congratulations so, yeah. on that. Congratulations yeah. on that. So where is McMurray Art League located? Do you have an actual location? Yes, we have a, a lo lovely little studio um, behind Atria's in the McDowell shops, um, right, right off of Washington Road. So. Is that open to the public? It is during our classes, but it's not um, all the time, it's just when we have events there. There you go. So that's quite accessible. What, what sort of um, requirements for membership? You, you made the comment it's for artists. Is it, are, are they people who are well established? Are they people who are just starting? Anybody can join. Anybody who wants to learn, wants to just watch. <laughs> um, we encourage everybody, um, you know, high school and up, mm -hmm. on up to join. And there are no requirements. We do not jury in. For membership, um, so if you if you love so when you say jury and just for people who don't know what that means, it's not like you have to submit a bunch of artwork, and they vote on whether or not you're good enough to join. Right. So you're an equal opportunity art league. We are we very good. Are. We very have we good. have people of all different skills and experiences. So well, talk about that a little bit. What kind of mediums do your artists use? Is it basically painting or? Um, what, what sort of mediums? We, we have all kinds of um, artists, actually. Um, uh, Three-dimensional, Jan works in uh, polymer clay. We have mosaic artists um, who I um, really like. And, but, but a lot of people, a lot of our members are watercolor painters, but we've had, we have pastel painters, uh, um, oil painters, um, and, photography. and photography now. And, and Digital. And, Digital yeah, I'm getting digital is new. Art. That's a new yeah. new one. That, that one that one was interesting. Trying to get that one into the um, being accepted as a as a medium. Or uh, is membership only open at certain periods of time, or can you basically go online to the website and apply at any point? Anytime we're open. Just um, yeah, just. So do you have formal meetings for yes. the members? Yes, we have. Um, um, once a month, we have a meeting um, from September through May. And after a business meeting, you know, telling everybody what events we've got coming up and things we need to talk about, we ha usually have a presenter who is an artist um, who usually demos their craft. Their particular skill. Mm -hmm. So it's, it sounds like it's really wide open to anyone who has the creative bug and might want to join with like-minded people. That's right. There you go. That's great. Mm -hmm. So Jan, you're the treasurer of the organization. Yes. Um, can you tell me about how many members we currently you currently have? Oh, we've got close to eighty members right now. Um, it's gone up and down over the years, but uh, but that's pretty good for a, a regional 
Oh, uh, I would say league. so. I would we say so. We have people from all over, you know, McMurray and uh, Upper St. Clair and Mount Lebanon and Washington. So it's not a resident. There's no residency no. requirement. Correct. You can be from wherever. Mm -hmm. Well, that's nice. Mm -hmm. That's nice that you, it's, it's open. If someone's looking for something like that to join, I don't imagine there's a lot of them around, but this art would leagues, be no. art league. So this would be a good option for people. Mm -hmm. Right. Would you like to mention the other board members? We we couldn't invite everybody to come. So, right. We have uh, Leslie Baldwin as our vice president. Uh, Annie is is president, and I'm treasurer. And uh, Sandy Conley is the um, recording secretary. And Rosetta um, Volpe Dufala is the corresponding secretary. And then looking on your website, it looks like you have various committees for different um, <coughs> is is situations mm -hmm. for them to do. So we'll probably, let's talk about that in a little bit. But what I wanted to also do, if you don't mind, is talk a little bit about each of you personally and ask how you ended up becoming an artist and getting involved. <laughs> so, Anne, why don't we start with you first um, can you tell us a little bit about your background when you first got involved with art and I've been drawing since I could hold a pencil there and, you go um, uh, or I a just, crayon <laughs> yes and um, I my, my dad was very encouraging um, uh, he was an artist himself um, you know on the side um, and he got me painting in oils in the garage when I was six and, and um, I won a couple of contests, you know, the mm -hmm. Draw Your Daddy contest with the local mm -hmm. paper and uh -huh. that kind of thing. And I got really encouraged by, you know. Um, but I just love, especially love to draw people. And I, in high school, I would get bored and sketch the, the teacher or <laughs> fellow <laughs> students. And, there you um, go. But, but I've had no f real form formal training in art. I, I've taken classes at the Carnegie Museum and of course at our art league. But, Which um, classes at Carnegie Museum? I was taking, I was um, the open models, the models, open model studio. I, okay. I took um, a couple of watercolor classes and um, also a pastel class finally at the end from Linda Walden who was amazing, so. Um, just as a side note, I had um, <coughs> interviewed uh, Ruth Mahoney from the glass factor, uh, the glass mm -hmm. place, mm -hmm. a stained glass, and we both, um, bonded over the idea that we went to Tamashan or art classes at Carnegie Mellon I when we were in grade those. school. But anyway, so you haven't had any formal training. Mm -hmm. You seem to work primarily, uh, you like to do people. I do. Um, we're gonna show a few of your um, um, pictures and it seems like every one of them is mm -hmm. about people. Mm -hmm. Is that your primary subject matter? That is, it really is. I love, I love drawing people. And what medium do you use? Um, I started Mediums. out um, using just graphite pencil, but um, in the last eight years or so, I've been just fascinated by pastel, the soft pastel. Um, it's, um, do you paint it all or anymore? You said you started with oils or what? Um, I, I dabble in it. Actually, I've been doing some digital painting. Um, ah, there you go. Watercolor and ink. It's, it's really <coughs> fun. <coughs> Right so what inspires you? Is it any person or certain um, poses or things of that nature? I, I, I got several, um, like uh, 12 or 15 actually, um, notebooks full of, uh, sketchbooks full of um, musicians because I go to a lot of folk concerts especially and I okay. love sketching musicians. So that's, they're sitting in the same place usually for, for know, a while. For a while and it's, it's really wonderful to be able to Sketch and, it, and I find that um, the more I like the music, the better the, the picture comes out. Ah, there so, you go. <laughs> yeah. Do you do you think that the music inspires you to for a certain um, way you display the artist, whether it's folk um, music or jazz or something else? I, I'm a folk musician myself, so um, oh, okay. Yeah, I, I I'm partial to that. Another that aspect genre. of art. Yeah. Right. That <laughs> that you do. Yes. So do you actually do portraits? Like, would you? Is this more of a business for you or a hobby or? It's it's his passion for me. I, I have done commission portraits, but it's those are really hard mm -hmm. because you really have to know a person well to. Um, so we're showing a few of your pictures. This one's, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> can you see which one it is? It's mm -hmm. the, the um, Carney. The Carney, mm -hmm. that's a carnival person. Um, Jan and I go to this pastel um, conference every other year when it's held in, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And we were eating lunch um, in, in Old Town one day, and uh, there was a carnival happening in the square. And this 
guy was sitting there, there you know. obviously, you know, kind of posing, but I oh, just, I just snapped a picture of him and it, mm -hmm. it was really, it was fun. It must be difficult though to do <coughs> figurative drawing if the person's not still. And particularly capturing the face, do you mm -hmm. find that easy or hard? Um, it's, it's gotten me to where um, I, I, I can sketch pretty fast, um, whether with somebody's moving. Um, some musicians are, are all over the place, so um, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. you'll learn to sketch fast. But, uh. So I saw on your website that you talked about the technology and about introducing that as part of your um, art repertoire. And there is a woman who did a series of pictures of your members. So that's oh, the handy. digital and the, <coughs> is that a comp were they all digital on, on an iPad? Yes, in fact, uh, she was using a, a program that I use on my iPad, it's called Procreate. Procreate. Yeah. And, um, yeah. So if anybody out there is thinking of trying one, that might be a good one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got a, a zillion different kinds of brushes and, and mediums, watercolor, ink, um, you know, pastels, um, it's really. What, what Sandy did was she took, she had photos of the people and then <clears throat> she incorporated their art into the uh, into the finished piece. So for the one she did for me, she had a sunset painting in the background, you know, and then used all those same colors in, in nice. the one of me. So that was was kind of fun. So now that we're we're talking <coughs> to you, let's talk about what kind of art mediums you like to use, Jan. Well, I, I don't have any formal training either. No? Um, no, I was actually a high school math teacher. Oh my goodness. For four years at Trinity, and then I got into software development, and Annie and I actually worked at the same company um, for a while. And um, when I retired in 2009, I got back into my art, which I had done as a, as a kid. Um, <clears throat> but then, you know, family and work and everything, you get away from the things you really love. And so then I got back into my art. And I work in a variety of mediums. Okay. Um, so the I think we can show. Yeah, that one is polymer clay. It's mixed media and, it, and it's polymer clay and beads and resin and crazy stuff. And Find objects, it sounds like, a yeah, little bit. Yeah, well, a little bit um, <coughs> of different kinds of things. And so that's a, a wall piece, yeah. Lovely. So, so you, that's relatively new for you, though? Yes, I, it is. Um, we, one of the things we do with uh, the McMurray Art League is we have what's called, we call them CAFE, Creative Arts for Everyone. And one of our members is a polymer clay artist, and she did one of those for anybody who wanted to attend and it's you know it's basically free it's like five bucks mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> you pay for materials and she taught us a polymer clay um, project we made uh, Christmas ornaments and I just got hooked <laughs> so, so then I got into polymer clay so that's one of the things I do in addition to you know I, I never met a medium I didn't like so so you've done painting regular I've done oil, oil? painting and uh, watercolor and that's an oil painting of my kitten with backlit, and um, it's pretty. Yeah, she's our trophy cat. You can't touch <laughs> her. <laughs> um, uh, that's a pastel. That's my new granddaughter with um, her other grandmother, and uh, so I do figurative work too. Um, so that's pastel is my first love as well. Annie and I uh, have that in common, and so we're going again off to Albuquerque to the uh, pastel conference uh, in June. So that will be fun. I also work in uh, watercolor. The one with the the lemon tree that came up earlier was uh, was a watercolor, and that's done on um, a material called Yupo. It's a plastic. That one. It's plastic actually plastic paper if you can believe it and so the the paint just slides around like crazy but uh, you can get some interesting effects. I was going to ask about that it sounds like that would be a difficult thing to do when you think in terms of watercolor being absorbing, diff yeah. absorbing and also difficult to manage just on regular paper much less yes. <laughs> on something that's slick. Well same question to you do you get inspiration from a certain theme or you know where do you how do you decide what you're going to draw or paint well, or I, I have a lot more I don't know variety than Annie concentrates on the on the portraits although she's done some beautiful landscapes as well but I we travel quite a bit my husband and I and um, so I've got all these 
travel photos and so landscapes and I've done some uh, commissions. Uh, I've done, I did a, a, a painting of my uh, landscaper's dog. Uh, it was pastel and he just loved this painting because the dog passed away of course you know then you you know you're emotionally attached to the painting everybody as well. who has a pet understands yes. that yes and so he every one of his customers he shows this painting to on his phone so he sends me all this business oh, nice. <laughs> of doing pet portraits and many times the pet has passed away which means you don't have a very good photo of the right, pet right right and uh, but uh, you know I'm not out to make a side business of this, but uh, it, it does help me pay for my expensive habits. For your supplies, <laughs> for your supplies. But you bring up an interesting point, and that is that, you know, it's something, you need to be creative, and it can then morph into something more if you want it to, That's true. to do that. Um, do you each have studios in your home? Like, do you require, like, a private space or a, a like if, if someone wanted to say, I want to be an artist, I want to create, what, what kind of space do they need? It depends on what you work in and what medium you work in. I have taken over one of the bedrooms and I have my pastel station and I have my watercolor station and I, you know, and then I had my polymer clay station and then pretty soon I outgrew that and I moved into half the basement. And because I work in um, mixed media, you know, I collect beads and shells. And so now it's kind of half the basement. <laughs> it's, it grows and grows. Mm -hmm. Annie has a, her own space. Yeah, yeah I've got a, um, a finished attic that is my studio, and, and it's really lovely up there. But so. in all actuality, that isn't absolutely necessary no, for anybody. No, you need not. basically a table, a sketch pad. Mm -hmm and the materials That's right. to do it. Um, is, there, is there anything that you haven't done as far as art? I mean, ceramics, stained glass, we talked about the uh, stained glass. I've taken a couple of ceramics courses at the Carnegie Museum of Art, which I really loved, um, mm -hmm. and I'd love to get back into that. My dad was uh, worked in ceramics toward the end of his life. Um, uh, I've done some uh, dry felting um, which is needle really felting. Mm -hmm. needle felting, oh, wow. which is really neat. I want to get back into that, um, and I, I would love to start working on mosaics, which I've never done. So we talked earlier about the variety of artists who are members. Mm -hmm. Do you have textile artists, people who work in? Um, we had one, Darlene. Yeah, yeah, Dar Darlene, yeah actually, yeah, she she taught us needle felting. Yeah, oh, you know, okay. and mm -hmm. one of those cafes, you know, which I I said, you know, if you have a little project that only takes a couple hours to do, mm -hmm. you can do it for free basically for for the members and uh, it's a it's a fun thing so even though neither of you had formal training to become an artist when you first started now that you've gotten into different interests of mediums you're concentrating on classes in those sort of things like you talked about pastels well i just finished we just had a class with uh, a local very well-known artist barry jeter who works in watercolor and oil, and he taught us watercolor. And so we just had a class yesterday and then the previous week. Um, so I took that class <laughs> because he's a fantastic mm -hmm. teacher and a fantastic artist. He, he always has a booth at the Three Rivers Arts Festival if you get a okay. chance to go and see his Which work. Which will be coming up soon in June. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It'll probably rain all the time again. Yes, <laughs> yes it does. <laughs> it's, it's classic, but um, yeah, so so that was watercolor, which and he titled he titled the class watercolor friend or foe uh. <laughs> because watercolor is a, a difficult medium can be to very work challenging in. yeah but it doesn't take much space so that's one that you could do at your kitchen table and then mm -hmm. you can clean it up and have dinner so uh, so that's a one that people start out in a lot of times do you think that um, any of the and I didn't suggest this question before we we met but. You know, a lot of people, there are books that can teach you how to draw figures. They give you basically the, the <coughs> rules about proportion and things of that nature. Do you think that, that learning out of a book is a good way to learn art if people are just, you know, starting out? It's a good way to start, but it's, um, I think, hands-on and having somebody 
actually draw in front of you. It's, it, I, I've always been fascinated by it. To kind of coach you and explain yeah, why like, oh. certain things happen. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. I would think that painting would be difficult, watercolor and oil, because until you learn about how the mediums work behave. Mm -hmm. and behave, it would be very difficult. Personally, I've never, I do some sketching and things like that and uh, work with color pencil, um, graphite, things of that nature. Um, I try, I've tried acrylic painting, which is more manageable in a lot of ways than watercolor or oil. But I would imagine you're right, that if you have somebody who's a master of the medium, it can help you. And another thing, uh, during classes you get feedback on, on what you're mm -hmm. working on too, and suggestions <coughs> right. which you can't get from a book. <laughs> right, so, right. Yeah. So how often do each of you actually work on the art? And how, how often are you out in, in your, up in your attic working? I haven't been in my attic for a while, but I've been sketching people on Zoom meetings, ah. <laughs> <laughs> which has been really fun. Oh, well, you know what? That's an interesting way to do it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's great because the, pe the person is ta they're talking for you know, several minutes. And there you go. So it's, uh, do you normally also, do you sketch from photos? Like, do you ever take pictures mm -hmm. of people? I do. I, try, I like to try to um, at least get a, a, a rough sketch. Um, while they're, well, whatever's happening is happening, but I, I do work from photographs. I've often wondered if people think that's cheating if you have to work from a photograph. There's, you know, two, you know, there's lots of different people thinking about that. About so that. it's like, yeah, um, I don't have a problem doing that. I, they say, you know, the lighting, I mean, there is a, a lighting issue uh, with photographs. It's not, natural light is, is much different and our eyes see Mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the depth um, that you can't right. see in a photograph is two-dimensional, but um, I've had success in, in working from photos, so. Well, I would imagine that would help definitely um, help you get the features down mm -hmm. as better than trying to keep them while the people are moving. Right. But then again, figurative drawing and sketching, that's, that's something to master in and of itself. When it's sports figures, you see some of these court reporters, you see these people who are doing it right as they go along. Right, and that's, that's something that's, that's challenging, but that's something I would really love to do. Is, there you is go. Be a court, court reporter. There sketcher. you go. Yeah, that, that would be, be really interesting. Fun. So, Jan, how about you? What percentage of your time do you think you work on art? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> Not it's addictive, huh? Well, no, no, not that. I just, um, I, I, it's hard to get started. It is oh. intimidating to get, sit there with a blank sheet of paper. Got it. You know, and, and um, I have on my computer, I have it cycling through the background pictures or pictures from mm -hmm. my photo mm -hmm. reel. And um, <clears throat> every once in a while, one will come up and I'm like, that's a painting. And I figured out how to grab that particular photo and save it off. Um, so, you know, I've got a whole collection of things that are potential paintings, but getting myself to sit down and do it is hard, which is why I th really like the classes mm -hmm. that McMurray Art League offers, uh -huh. because it gets me to sit down and paint. So really, it seems as if you have a lot of different things that inspire you, mm -hmm. and it's just a question of deciding today I'm going to forsake all my other obligations. Yes. <laughs> Do you think art if for you is a treat? Is it like something that you reward you yourself, reward yourself with? Mm -hmm. with? To a degree it is because there are so many things drawing your attention in your house and uh, you know other duties that even as a retiree it's I find myself very very busy. Um, so yeah it's it's kind of a reward and, w and when I finally sit down and do it although it can be very frustrating. I always feel like I'm bringing any painting back from the dead. <laughs> and and it, it's in a way, it's true for me anyway. Um, once I get done, I'm like, wow, I did that, mm -hmm. you know, so Good. that's fun. So do you, did either of you feel that you were more prolific or creative during the past uh, lockdown, the pandemic, mm -hmm. when you didn't have all the other obligations, you didn't have to be you know, going to meetings or doing other things, or you couldn't do other things. Mm -hmm. Were you more prolific during that period? Well, I was with my, my Zoom sketches. It's um, it's because they're quick and they're, uh, I, you know, every day it's like I'm in a meeting and there you <laughs> there's go. a person there. And, um, I've really enjoyed that, you know, it kept my chops up. So well, they, they, a lot of people have reported that during the pandemic, people went back to things mm -hmm. or started new things mm -hmm. that they had never thought about before. 
And art is one of those things. Everybody says, well, I'm not talented, I'm not talented. I think sometimes you really have to try it before you know. Um, and there, because there's so many varieties of art, which is what we're talking about, um, you know, who knows what might you might be good at? You know, mm -hmm. you talked about being a math teacher. You talked about being in technology. You know, the right and left brain concept. Mm -hmm. It's not like you have to be one thing or you have no. to be the other. No. So I mean, it's it's really one of the things that I'm I'm hoping about these series of programs is that people understand you just have to try. I mean, mm -hmm. it's. It's something you just want to try. If and it can be very relaxing. It can be frustrating. Um, it certainly can be something that could morph into a second career, if mm -hmm. not a hobby. But uh, do you, would you agree with that? Do you think yeah. art's like really a good outlet for people? I do, and I think um, with all the technology nowadays. I mean, people when they were locked at home, there's great YouTube classes out there. There you watercolor, go. That's absolutely oil right. painting, figure drawing, whatever you want is out there. Um, and there's some really fine, and, and um, many of our, our really good instructors really figured out how to work, th <laughs> do that Zoom thing, you know, well, uh, and for classes. So well, and that, that really opened up the world really for people. Yep. It really did. I, I found myself taking um, Zoom classes from instructors that I wouldn't have traveled to see. There you go. And uh, so that was really nice. I took a whole bunch of them, actually. <laughs> good. <laughs> and uh, so that was, that was fun. So we're going to stop for a few minutes and take a little break. Um, after we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the specific classes and about the McMurray Art League and some of the member activities that can be um, experienced by people, whether you're a member or not. So if you would please step away for a bit, but come back soon and we'll talk some more with Ann and Jan of the McMurray Art League. Thank you very much. See you again in a few. Welcome back to this episode of Exploring the Arts Around Us. Today we're talking with Ann Trimble and Jan Pinney of the McMurray Art League. Um, earlier we talked a little bit about what they each personally like to do as far as artwork and mediums. Let's talk now a little bit more about the McMurray Art League itself, some of the classes and things of that nature that are available to the members and non-members. So, and remind us again, where is McMurray Art League's studio? The studio is, is behind Atria's in the McDowell shops right off of Washington Road, you know, just, just south of um, Donaldson's Crossroads. So. And it seems as if that's your location for conducting classes. So can you tell us a little bit about the different types of classes that you have? We have, oh, um, there. we're fortunate to have some really lovely, um, really talented uh, artists who have come and taught classes, uh, watercolor, and oil paints and pastel, mostly, um, yeah, um, as far as painting goes, so. Um. And also, the uh, you just, Jan, learned how to do the uh, clay medium? Polymer clay. Polymer clay, thank you for reminding me. Yes. So, do you, do you have to be a member to take classes through the McMurray Art League? Nope, you do not. You See, that not. is an important thing for people to know. If you're, we talked earlier about how art is something that you know, there's no harm in trying and you might want to try it. So if you don't have to be a member, this might be an avenue to learn how to explore something you might be considering. Right. Yes, yeah, so we have um, 16 long tables, you know, but artists can spread stuff out. Um, and we have this big mirror, so if an if a, uh, instructor is working flat, everybody can see it. And it's, um, it's a really nice setup. Sounds good. Yeah. Do the classes run on certain a certain series? Is it like every just whenever you get an artist to come in and they should just check the website, is that the way to do it? Pretty much, we um, usually do it um, two or three weeks in a row, you know, on a, like a, say a Wednesday or a Tuesday, you know, uh, sequ sequentially. Can people just drop by the studio or do they, you have certain hours that they can come by? No, we have, um, it's only open when there's an event at the studio. Okay. Um, and, but um, 
when we're there, we, we let people in. We usually have a, a display, a, an exhibit up at the studio too, and then people have bought <laughs> pieces off the wall from there. Mm -hmm. So it's really I was great. wondering about that. Mm -hmm. So people could actually go in and buy something. Mm -hmm. So let's talk a little bit about <coughs> some of the things you do offer your members. You offer classes. You offer the camaraderie and the encouragement, mm -hmm. depending on you know what it is, their medium they're working on. You help them get into program, um, not programs, you help them get into art, uh, juried art uh, showcases and things of that nature, am mm -hmm. I correct? Yes, um, we have um, two regular exhibits um, a year, uh, fall and the spring, and our spring one is juried and it's, everybody's allowed to put their pieces in, but we jury for awards, so it's like, um, different categories. Let's talk a little bit about that. Many of the people here in Peters who have gone to the Peters Township Library will remember seeing McMurray Art League artwork on the walls. Mm -hmm. Now I've noticed that it seems thematic. One time it's maybe landscapes, one time it's uh, fruit, maybe it's still life, one time it might be at animals or something. Mm -hmm. Do you, tell, tell us about the relationship with Peters Township Library. Yeah, our recording secretary, Sandy Connolly, um, is the, uh, our liaison with the library there. And, and it's every three months or so, she picks a theme and, and people put, bring their artwork in. And um, I think this time it's um, animals. It's animals. And animals, right I now. think, yes. And next week I think it's changing out to something else. Silly. Now that's been there as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. Did that start back with Mrs. Lee when Mrs. Lee was the director, or was really, it? Uh, I, you know, it predates mm -hmm. Annie and me, mm -hmm. who joined in 2009. So they've so been doing be that for a really long time. Mm -hmm. That's a nice way for the artist to get some exposure. Yes. yes. Actually, I just sold a piece. One of the librarians um, purchased one of my dog paintings. <laughs> nice. So, uh, so yeah, we, we do sell some items out of there. So, and do you have a formal show coming up? And, and will it be there or is it somewhere else? It will be at Peter Township Library in the, in the main hall, hall there. Oh, right. yes, the atrium area atrium, when yeah. you enter. Yep. I think I've seen that. Now, is this, remind me, so the artists get to submit their artwork and then people can go in and they can vote for we have a People's Choice Award. People's Choice, thank yes, you, yeah, that's it. That's during the exhibit. Very yes. good, very good. That's a nice uh, other way to attract people to the library and get a lot of traffic because the library's got a lot of traffic. Um, so where else do you do shows? Do you have, is that like your primary one where you display at the library all year round and then have a show? Do you have a secondary? Well, the, the w permanent one, the one that's on the wall is different than our, our um, spring show. Okay. Um, and we have it up. Yeah, on the spring show we have s screens and, and mm -hmm. um, yeah, members are encouraged, I guess up to four pieces of work, um, and um, and yeah, um, we, we we currently have an exhibit at the Chartier's Bend. Um, they call it the retirement resort, the oh, new okay. new place on off Mayview Road. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they have invited us to uh, to put up a display there, and they had a big reception and. They're trying to, you know, sell to the public to, to come in and, um, you know, take a tour and, and, oh, and move the there. Okay. But they, uh, it was really nice. They they have us displaying. We've we've sold some work, uh, and a couple of the residents have also uh, um, put their work on on our screens. But uh, so we had that. We, the Galleria used to have um, a spring and a fall show. The pandemic kind of put you know, monkey wrench into that. But uh, a couple of times they gave us uh, an empty storefront to display in, so uh, so that was nice. The gallery I'm talking about, right? Um, so that was nice. So yeah, we've we've had quite a few exhibit opportunities for our members. Now that would be only for members. Classes are open to everybody, and our meetings are open to everybody. Okay. We also have um, we were invited to um, participate in a, in a show at the Arc um, oh, yes. uh, Cafe on, in uh, Cannonsburg. Um, they have a big meeting room back there it has a lot of our artwork in it now so. yeah this is the uh, the uh, arc for it, it, it's I don't the rehabilitation yes, yes. Okay. It, it's mm -hmm. uh, for disabled and disadvantaged mm -hmm. people they've opened up a new building in um, the old Brody's furniture store in Cannonsburg it's a beautiful building and they invited a bunch of local artists including the art league to exhibit there well, and art's for everyone. I think that that can be an outlet no matter, 
who you are or what your circumstances are. We talked earlier about the idea that art is definitely an outlet. It's something that people shouldn't say, oh, I'm not talented, I can't, without trying. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in something, you know, um, just as an anecdote, um, you know, even a, even a paint by number set is something <laughs> if you wanted to try it. <laughs> I actually just was talking to someone who started doing a paint by numbers uh, landscape with birds and you know like sort of an outdoor scene and it's relaxing it you know is. they do it mm -hmm. while their husband's doing something and it's it's just they're together but they're doing their own thing parallel so. play <laughs> parallel play so but no but it, it sounds like you have an opportunity to get on into the public and have your artist just work displayed in different places mm -hmm. but some of the other things you do I understand you also um, have done some classes about how to develop art into a business or how mm -hmm. to market art for mm -hmm. your for your um, members that's right we, oh. we just had a, a class um, what night was it Tuesday night yeah Tuesday evening that a local uh, lady who who's very accomplished a young woman who's very accomplished in selling her own art uh, gave us an amazingly detailed presentation about how to use Facebook and Twitter and Reddit and TikTok and you know, all these these venues that mm -hmm. uh, uh, and how to sell your promote yourself and market yourself. So that was quite interesting. We also had a presentation by one of our members who's a photographer, uh, Aaron Dom Sen is his name, and he uh, taught us how to photograph your work and how to manipulate. Uh, reference photos and you know the technology behind that so that was quite interesting so it's not always about applying pa paint to paper kind of right. thing it's it's other aspects as well well if you get to the point where you are confident in what you're doing and you think there's an audience for it that's obviously another big component of how you go about getting your art out to the other people now you also, I understand, can help with mem help members because you sometimes trade or resell artworks or art supplies among your members. Is that true? That's something. If someone's getting started and they want to come in and and look for some supplies or tools, that's that's becoming more of a, a common thing <laughs> now <laughs> because we have members um, who have passed away or moved away um, and just basically donated um, their stuff to. Um, to our league, which is great, and we had a, a we sale. We had a huge sale where uh, raised a bunch of money for the art league um, from um, you know used art supplies. Now, some were new, <laughs> so uh, we still have a few things left at the studio. If anybody so was if anyone interested, of <laughs> got a little bit of an urge to maybe try yeah. some artwork, mm -hmm. yes. stop you know figure out when you can stop by and maybe see what you could pick up to get started. Um, one of the other things that I understand about the McMurray Art League, you routinely offer a scholarship to a student. Can you please talk a little bit about what that involves and how people could apply? Um, this, as far as, this is how I understand it, we have a, a scholarship every year um, at Peters, Peters Township High School uh, student who is... So all you kids out there. <laughs> who yeah. is planning to pursue art as a career. Um, is any, uh, anybody like that is, is um, able to uh, um, register and... Um, so do, so in order to register for the scholarship, do they have to show some of their artwork mm -hmm. and submit it? And yes. is there any particular medium or is it whatever medium? It's whatever at this point. Just so it can be photography, ceramics, painting, exactly. anything of that nature. Exactly. When it when or when is the um, application for that? I think it's in May. In May. May it's it's May fourth, and okay. um, the uh, link to the application is on the home page of the website, which I know you're going to put up. Right. The, we'll uh, have that shown up link. on the screen at some point. McMurrayArtLeague.com. There it is. Okay. And um, so, it's Peters Township. Uh, the art department um, helps us with this, so Good. they they handle the you know, bringing in the work. And one of our members, Carol Oren is her name, is the one who kind of coordinates that. It's a $500 scholarship, and the, um, the, the student who wins can show their work in our spring show, which is good timing. Certainly. Because it's, uh, Certainly. it's going to be right after the, the deadline. Any restriction as to what sort of other ongoing art education? Like, could it be like the Art Institute, or could it be, does it have to be a college, or is it 
It's just I a question of some art program. Yes, some some uh, yeah some art program. I would say it's also open to um, members families if if you're a member but you don't not in Peters Township. Oh, okay. It, you mm -hmm. know you could also apply for this. Right. Your membership is not restricted to only Peters Township. Correct. But you do focus on getting scholarship applicants from the high school and that's an annual opportunity. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you do allow your members kids if they happen to be non Peters Township. Right. Or Correct. A private school of yeah. some kind. Yeah. Cool. So then once they apply when is the um, scholarship decided on or uh, well, the committee, the scholarship committee, figures that out, and um, and then they just let me, the treasurer, know, and <laughs> I write the check. There you go. There you go. Um, so, do you know how long that's been going on? I wondered if you. Wow, that's a good question. I I don't know. I don't know. Well, so if any of you Peters Township students out there are interested in getting a scholarship please think about applying, but get busy and do it quick. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully you'll see this show before that happens. Um, so it, you're a, the McMurray Art League is a 501C4. Four. So you do fundraising and accept donations? Uh, we do. We are Tell not us a, about that. Okay, we are not a 501C3. And the difference, we're, we're a C4, and that's a social welfare organization, okay. that's the way it's classified. The difference between a C3 and a C4 is that if you, as an individual, donate to a 501C3, you can deduct that donation from your taxes. You cannot do that with a C4, so okay. we, we need to make that clear. We'll take donations, okay. <laughs> but uh, you know you can't deduct it from your taxes. Okay, okay, and that's very clear then for, for people. So in talking about what you offer to the community, we talked earlier about the idea that, um, and, and one of the points of this, these programs is that people should look and see what's out there for you to explore. McMurray Art League is a little different than some of the other um, organizations I've interviewed because they've been about a specific art um, ballet or theater or stained glass, for example. But McMurray Art League is very broad in what they offer. so. Anyone who's potentially interested has an opportunity to come to McMurray Art League and see what you offer and see the variety of possibilities. Mm -hmm. I would say that would be a good reason for you to explore that. Um, do you, for your purposes, Ian, what do you think is important about art for people? Oh my, that's an interesting question. <laughs> um, as an artist, it's hard to explain, um, but I, I know that, um, that art just um, brings to life um, somebody's experience or somebody's feelings if they're looking at a portrait. Um, I find that um, you know, some still lives are, are really moving and beautiful. You know, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not a, a big fan of abstract work, but there's, there's some, we have some really wonderful abstract artists in our, in our group too. So, um, and everybody's got a different take on, on what they like and what they don't like, but, um, so I think it's a real individual kind of a feeling, you know, an inspiration or a, mm -hmm. um, yeah. We talked calling. earlier, uh, before, while we were at break, we were talking about the fact that, um, you know, one of the fortunate things about being here in Peters Township is that the school district uh, has uh, made sure that the arts are included in the curriculum. We talked about STEM being very critical, STEM, but STEAM to me is what we need. The A needs to be there because artwork is something that you can do through your entire life. Uh, we talked also about the idea that, you know, sometimes people who are very technical, they have a job that's very technical, engineering or technology or math or accounting or whatever, need an outlet for that other side, the creative side. And art can be that for you. Do you, tell me Jan, what do you think? How, why did you get into art after being a math teacher? Um, <clears throat> well, I always did art um, <clears throat> as, a, as a kid. And uh, so I got back into it later. But um, 
it, it's just, I don't know, it's something that's in me that needs to come out. Um, although I have to take exception. You can be very creative on the technical side as well. There's well, a lot could. of creativity True. True. <laughs> in, involved in that. Um, but, uh, <clears throat> yeah, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's important to, for me to get my feelings down on a, on a sheet of paper to create something that I can say, look, I did this. And uh, so that's, that's important to me. And the other thing is I really like to have my artwork <coughs> inspire something in someone else. Mm -hmm. That they're looking at my painting and they're seeing what I saw. And they're experiencing the landscape or they're experiencing the expression on the face or, you know, oh, isn't that dog cute? You know, that kind of thing. That's, mm -hmm. That I get, I get uh, you know, satisfaction from that. I think that what you're saying, it, I agree with you, art evokes emotion in mm -hmm. people. It evokes a reaction. Mm -hmm. and sometimes it's, I don't like that. Sometimes it's, oh my God, that not that beautiful? But it evokes an emotion in people. But I think too, with creating art, it kind of allows you to relax. To me, I think one of the advantages of doing art is that you can step outside of the responsibilities. We talked earlier about you have your day in and day out, nine to five, things you have to do. And then if you're, you have the whole rest of your life with children running here, children running there, what you have to do to keep your house. Art's kind of an escape that where you can step back and you can take a little bit of time for yourself. There's no expectation. You know, sometimes people, I think, say, oh, I'm not going to try that because I won't be any good. We, that's not what it's about. Mm -hmm. It's about allowing yourself <coughs> to have the opportunity to take time to create. Right. And you know, the time flies. When mm. I am painting, the time will go by and it's like, where did those three hours go? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's good. That's good. Mm -hmm. You need to get out of yourself for a while and, and just, uh, you know, be somewhere else. And, and that's one of the reasons, again, why doing this program is uh, this series of programs has been s sort of important to me to try to help people understand or, or begin to think they have the right to enjoy things like that, mm -hmm. to look at other opportunities. Uh, you know, we talked about music, we talked about ballet, we theater. There's a lot of different opportunities out there. And as I said, McMurray Art League, as far as tactical, you know, hands-on art, is a good place to go and see what the possibilities are. One, one thing we have too, we haven't mentioned yet, um, open studios. Um, we have, we open the studio and, and, peop and the members and non-members can bring in whatever project they're working on or just come oh. and visit. Um, and we have many critiques and you know, just, um, people are very kind. Well, and so yeah. that would be a great way if somebody <laughs> wanted to start something and didn't have a place at home mm -hmm. that they could necessarily lay out everything or, or want to maybe not want someone looking over their shoulder from the family. So are yeah. those set times? Is that time, is they're, that on them? Um, right now they're um, um, every other week. Um, I ten, think to, ten to two. Ten to two at, at the studio. And the, the schedule's on, on the website. We try to yeah. keep the website on the webmaster, too. We try to keep the website current. Mm -hmm. um, and so all our events are out there. If you ever want to know what's going on, go to the website. Mm -hmm. So somebody could come by, talk to you about different options as far as paint, charcoal, pastel, watercolor, mm -hmm. graphite. Sure, yep. Come back with whatever supplies they decided they wanted to do and get some feedback from mm -hmm. people who were there. Yep not criticism. Feedback's the important thing about mm -hmm. art because, you know, everybody's a critic maybe, but while you're <laughs> constructing art, nobody should be a critic, right? Right. 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 Encourage, uh, well, it's a very supportive group. We, we really have, we have a wonderful board and um, a very supportive group of members, so mm -hmm. it's, it's fun. It's a good group to be well, involved Well, and do you in. have any age restrictions? I, I, I know you, we talked about giving a scholarship to a high school student. Can, can teenagers or what age are people allowed to technically join? Uh, high school. High school, yeah. Okay. And, um, and, and older. And a lot of our members are, are older and retired, um, but we do have some younger mature. members as well. Mature. mature. We call that mature. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, that would be fun. And I would imagine that sometimes a family, if you might have family members who might, you know, the mother likes to draw, the daughter or the son mm -hmm. comes and picks that up too. Yeah, occasionally we also thing we haven't uh, done it in a couple of years since uh, before COVID we had a, one of our members um, likes to, the paint along kind of a, a oh, thing okay. which is always oh, yeah. fun. We had a lot of uh, family members who come together, husbands and wives and 
parents and kids. Well, that was a that sort of a thing was a sort of a big commercial thing for a while. What was it? Paint and paint sip, and sip or yeah, whatever. The paint monkey or whatever that was. Yeah, whatever the different yeah. one. But the point of it is, it's encouraging people to do art. Mm -hmm. It's encouraging people to take time for themselves, experience something they may not have tried before, mm -hmm. see if they like it, find that creative outlet for themselves. Um, you know, I, I've appreciated the time you spent with us, with me on this, because I think McMurray Art League, as I said, kind of gives everybody a very broad idea of a place to go to find out more about art of different kinds. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, I, I never personally realized what you did until I started this mm -hmm. series of programs, and I realized that you, you provide a valuable service, a, an opportunity, shall I say, for people who could maybe learn about art and decide they'd like to pursue something. Um, thank you very much for coming to join me um, and talk about the McMurray Art League. I hope that people out there will take a look at the website. You'll go ahead and maybe think about if you consider doing some kind of artwork to go ahead and pursue that. Go to McMurray Art League, find some like-minded people who mm -hmm. could kind of give you some direction and maybe give you um, a little bit of a push to pursue your dream. Um, you know, <laughs> I like to close my programs with a quote to highlight the particular art form that's demonstrated by my guests. Well, Jan provided me with one that states exactly why <laughs> <laughs> groups like the McMurray Art League exist. We're gonna show you a slide of an actual artwork by Jan. Um, and it says, Glass. Earth without art is just eh. <laughs> so, I want you to understand that art is something that enhances your life. McMurray Art League can f help you find that particular way you want to enhance it, and hopefully you can pursue that. Look at that. You've learned about the McMurray Art League. Hopefully you'll learn more and be inspired to pursue your own artwork. We're going to close with some slides of the photos of the McMurray Art League studio so you can see kind of classes in action. And I'd like to thank you very much for tuning in to this program of exploring the arts around us with the wonderful collaborative and creative group, the McMurray Art League. Perhaps you will be inspired. Thank you very much. Bye for now.